Can I be angry for a moment? There's just no easy way to say this. In Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where I've been bringing you the story of three trans and non-binary teens who died by suicide in just a little bit more than a year, there has been tragically yet another suicide. Ashton Clatterbuck of Lancaster died by suicide. He was just 22 years old and the fourth suicide of a young trans person in Lancaster since November 2022. Ash's death has really hit this community hard, and from all accounts, he was an extraordinary young man who was politically involved in LGBTQ rights, climate issues, democracy, and gun violence. This is from a 2018 interview with Ash. I want them to be out here and to be supportive of each other and also to um, stand up for what they believe in and encourage teens to make the changes that they wish to see in the world. The youth of this country watch their every move and will be voting in a couple years, and that their policies do affect us and do impact our lives or lack thereof. Um, and it's really important that they keep in mind that um, the safety of students is their responsibility. As a political science and journalism student, just in the last year or so, Ash wrote articles titled, Hateful Political Rhetoric is Killing LGBTQ Americans and State Laws Targeting Transgender Individuals Are Doing Real Harm, titles that now resonate even deeper. According to an essay his parents wrote following his death, Ash had wanted to write yet another article for Lancaster Online, but since he never got the chance, they wrote what Ash was hoping to express himself, making reference to the nearly 500 anti-trans bills across the U.S they write, why can't we start loving and supporting trans youth instead of hating and attacking them? Ash's parents go on to make the point, as we saw in chapter one of this series, that when a trans person takes their life, naming the individual's pain as the culprit is an act of scapegoating. Transgender kids aren't tortured because they're trans, they're tortured because society is making the world unlivable for them. Ash's folks go on to encourage us to call out anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ discrimination wherever we see it. Make waves, they encourage, without apology, without mincing words, without holding back. And so, Mr. and Mrs. Clatterbuck, I am so, so very sorry for your loss of ash. As a parent and grandparent, I can't imagine what you're going through, but I can imagine how much you loved your son. So please, let me take up your challenge right now in this video to not hold back, to make some waves without apology or mincing words. Let's start by asking an important question about the number of trans youth suicides that have occurred recently in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. To talk openly about suicide, to speak its name, especially in the context of a young person or a teen, is scary. It's something many of us would just rather not do. Suicide scares us, I think, because down deep inside we know that the suicidal impulse lives within all of us. The French philosopher Albert Camus, seen here accepting the Nobel Prize for Literature, writes that it's the first problem all of us must answer. He wrote, there is but one true serious philosophical problem and that is suicide. Judging whether life is or is not worth living amounts to answering the fundamental question of philosophy. All the rest comes afterward. To think about Camus' vital problem of suicide, let's approach it symbolically and consider that it's not unlike the fictional auto-destruct sequence that seems to exist on every movie spaceship that no astronaut would ever consider using unless things got impossibly dire. Oh, no, no. Don't touch it! Don't touch it! In the movie Alien, the character Ripley, who is played by Sigourney Weaver, decides to initiate the self-destruct sequence because not only is she stranded and the last survivor of the spaceship Nostromo, but mainly because she feels it's the only way to kill the fatal presence of the alien that has infiltrated her ship. Danger. The emergency destruct system is now activated. The ship will detonate in T-minus 10 minutes. This is an important point. Ripley's goal is not to destroy her spaceship. Her goal is to kill the alien. Not the spaceship, but the alien. 
Now hold that thought as we ask this very pointed question. Why, in this relatively small place of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, have four young people who identified as trans non-binary youths killed themselves in a little over a year's time? Four. To answer this, I think we need to look at two opposing events that have been happening in Lancaster. First, we know that at least two of these four young people from Lancaster spoke about how anti-trans rhetoric was upsetting them just prior to their deaths. River Olmsted wrote of it and it was published on the day they died. And Ash Clatterbuck said he was upset due to the death of another non-binary person and wanted to write about it as well. On the opposite side, we also know that, like many states, Pennsylvania has had a number of anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ bills introduced, legislations that embolden and even license bigotry. Hate-inspired events that have taken place in Lancaster, such as stolen pride flags, hate scrawled on sidewalks and social media, bullying at schools, funding cuts over LGBTQ books, churches trying to thwart pride events, members of anti-LGBTQ extremist orgs fomenting fear. Then recently, somebody sent bomb threats to LGBTQ leaders and the librarian, canceling a drag queen story hour. All things which have occurred and are occurring as anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ legislations are being produced in the Pennsylvania State House. Interestingly, the epicenter where a number of these state bills originated and were supported seems to have occurred in Lancaster. Welcome back to This Week in Pennsylvania. Joined now by State Senator Ryan Allment, Republican from Lancaster County. Senator Ryan Allment from Lancaster County. Hello, I'm State Senator Ryan Allment. This is State Senator Ryan Allment. You are a bright rising star in the party and in the state. Uh, my responsibility as, uh, as a man of faith, as a, as a Bible-believing Christian in, in elective politics, to, to co-sponsor and sponsor pro-life legislation, to support traditional marriage, uh, to advocate for economic opportunity. In many ways, State Senator Ryan Allment of Lancaster is the archetype of a conservative Republican. He's a proud supporter of gun rights, school choice, cutting taxes, defending the border, right to life, and he has said that both his kids attend a Christian school. Senator Allman was also one of 17 Republicans who signed a January 4, 2021 letter that asked Congress to delay electoral college certification, which ultimately led to the January 6 insurrection. And like many Republicans, Senator Allman has a tendency to repeat himself. My legislation doesn't even ban those books. Wrongfully assuming it's a book ban. It is not a book ban. It's never been a book ban. It isn't intended to be a book ban. It's not a book ban. They call it a book ban. They know it's not a book ban. But a book ban... This is not a book ban. But it's not a book ban. Is it a book ban? It's absolutely not a book ban. And, and in fact, I think it prevents book bans. As majority whip of the Republican caucus and a member of the powerful Senate Education Committee, Senator Almond is also known to wield considerable influence. Part of this influence, the York Dispatch Editorial Board asserted was part of a group preoccupied with stirring anti-queer sentiment and inferred that he was part of a confederacy of dunces who would happily live in a world without gay people. He has also been referred to as homophobic on the floor of the Pennsylvania State Senate. We're talking about pornography. And the examples that I have here in my hand, I would challenge any member of the audience, any member of this committee, to review and say this does not constitute pornography. Senator Allman sponsored legislation that was said to be Pennsylvania's own version of the Don't Say Gay Bill that would, in essence, force schools to out students to parents. He sponsored legislation targeting LGBTQ youth that was referred to as a censorship and book ban. And he supported legislation that banned transgender athletes in school sports. State Senator Allman vehemently denies that any of these bills would harm LGBTQ youth. Defending his legislations in multiple editorials, he often denounces the media specifically for not contacting him prior. Well, what do you say to groups that are thinking uh, this is an opportunity for who people who might be homophobic to scrub references to the LGBTQ community and literature? And she said, 
point blank that, uh, you know, it sends a bad message that a black kid or a gay kid is not welcome by removing works that are sympathetic to them. And it can also be seen as an attempt to marginalize or attack th those. Yeah, uh, again, I, I completely disagree. We've made it very clear in the definition. This is not an attack on LGBTQ Pennsylvanians. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there, but more with Ryan Allman right after the break. Hi, I'm calling for Senator Allman. Yes, yes. And I'm following up on um, some trans teen suicides that have taken place in Lancaster County. There's been four actually since November 2022. Uh, and the last one tragically was just this past week, uh, a young man by the name of Ashton Clatterbuck. I wanted to ask him if he knew that during the same time that he was pushing his anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ bills, that in his home county of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, four trans and non-binary youth had killed themselves. I wonder if to those kids, Senator Allman's legislations look like aliens being sent out from the state house, aliens sent to destroy them in the form of book bans, bans on trans athletes, parental rights bills, and don't say gay bills. What happened next, Senator Allman? Can you honestly say that you had nothing to do with these kids' deaths?